Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 6, Thoughts. This episode is called The Good Samaritan, and another episode I love. Like, almost everything MCU, especially everything, almost everything MCU TV. Uh, yeah, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode. No spoilers for anything MCU that came out after this episode first premiered. Let's dive right in. Holy crap, this was a an emotional episode. A lot of great revelations. Just, yeah, fantastic. I think it's my favorite season four episode so far. So, yeah, um... Let's see. Yeah, we, we get a flashback to back in the day, and the machine matters. I mean, it makes matter. And, yeah, uh, Joseph is not crazy about Lucy telling Eli about the, the book. And it's one of those things, like, Lucy, she, is, she has so thoroughly drunk the Kool-Aid. Like, she drank it up, and... Now she's like, no, the, you know, everyone will agree with, or at least every, everyone on the team, every scientist will agree that this is, you know, this is just how we should do this. And, you know, Joseph is like, yes, maybe not. And let's see, we get the, yeah, uh, Daisy goes to, to get Gabe and yeah, good little thing, you know, you don't really think I'm just gonna get in your car with you, do you? And you just hear the, the you know, the, yeah, plane landing right outside. Who said anything about a car? And, oh, that's right, yeah, by the end of this episode, we still don't know where Gemma is or what exactly, I mean, I can't help but wonder if, if Mace is doing this so he has something on Fitz so that he can push the, the rest of the team if need be. But yeah, you know, and I, I love, you know, don't you dare say the rest of that sentence, you know, just, yeah. And and that's the thing, you know, uh, up until this point, it's been like, oh, you know, he's this this boss that encourages everyone, big smile on his face, doesn't doesn't threaten, doesn't you know, use his, his authority for anything, but now he's saying, trust me, put this bag over your head, you know, that's, that's the dark side of trust, you know, asking someone to trust you with something like that. And, let's see, yeah, and, and, yeah, so once Gabe is, on the the Zephyr, you know, he he guesses that Robbie is an agent, which that is a fairly logical, you know, guess from that. And and Daisy is okay with going along with it, but Robbie, you know, pretty quickly, yeah, not not a big fan. And yeah, Mace, you know, tells Phil prepare to be boarded. Very, very intense, and <laughs> so so Mac comes in and and tells them what's going on. Tells them you know we have to do this, and they're you know and one of them is like why, and he's like why really, <laughs> and yeah I like um, <laughs> the the we have the um, let's see. Yeah, then, then Mac says, you know, everyone, just get in the damn box. You too, Ironside. Hey, screw you, Black Kojak. No one moves this thing except for me. Great line. Great references back and forth. Ironside and Kojak both being, you know, I'm not sure. Do they still get shown on TV? But, you know, a little while back. You know, that you have to go a bit far back. Like, that that's so long ago that the... the you know, Benny Hill parodied those characters, you know, and Benny Hill, you know, R.I.P. died in 1991, so, yeah, you know, by the time this episode first aired, was that 25 years, uh, you know, yeah, so, but, but, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that there are people who still remember it, I, I barely, it's been many, many years since I watched any, but I remember thinking it was quite good. And, let's see, then we have the, 
yeah, um, you know, Robbie says, you deserve the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Really love the, the sibling banter between the two of them in the, the flashback, the thing of, you know, bed is for people who don't want to go to college, so why aren't you in bed? And the thing with, you know, I'll help you with your homework. You are not helping with my homework. I need an A. And let's see. Yeah, and, and you know, we and Robbie believe that it's Robbie's fault that the gang shot the, you know, fired into the car. And, you know, because of the, the you know, oh, this guy lost this, this um, street race. Now he wants a rematch, you know, and, and Gabe is like, they're, they're, they're a gang, though. You can't, you know, you don't want to mess around with them. You could get badly hurt, and Robbie isn't taking things seriously. You know, that's the whole thing. He's not, he's not in college. He's not really thinking about his future. He's doing street races with gang members, you know. So, so yeah, it is a very logical assumption that it is, you know, revenge for, for that, you know, that's how they knew where he would be, you know, they, you know, they, they said time and place, they know where he lives, so they were, you know, they just needed to be there to, to block the car when it was green, and that was also, like, the moment that, you know, the light turns green, the car in front doesn't move, like, immediately you're like, oh, no, 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 this is, this, I know, I, I've seen this movie before, this is where that's going, and you know the the back doors open, Molotov cocktail, and it's just yeah, very very intense hit. And let's see, yeah, you know Robbie was dead, wasted. And let's see. Um. Yeah, and then we have the 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 Good Samaritan, you know, and it is yeah, you know, from a certain point of view, if you can't see the fire skull, yeah, looks like you know, oh, he came and saved Robbie, you know, and then we get the the scene from Robbie's point of view, and you know, he talks about oh, he he begged and he swore. To, to, you know, and, and that is, like, it's been a while since I read the, the comic book version, but I'm, I'm almost certain that is how it goes. You know, in order to become a, a ghost writer, it requires you to, yeah, die with basically this, like, this mixture of, of like, regret and a, a desire for vengeance, a desire to, you know, yeah. Because, you know, Ghost Rider can't really do anything, he can't use you if you're not looking for any vengeance, you know, which helps explain, you know, because people die all the time, and there's plenty of people who die wishing that, oh, you know, if, if only this, that, and the other thing, you know, please take care of the people I leave behind kind of thing, but it requires you to also, and I think it also needs to be a brutal death. I feel like I've heard that aspect of, yeah. Heard, read, whatever. And, yeah, you know, he wasn't a good Samaritan. He was the devil. And we get another flaming, just, yeah. And, you know, the thing, you know, he passed whatever he had inside on to me. And Gabe, you know, pieces together, you're the ghost writer. And really love the, the character moment of, you know, don't you put their blood on me. And, you know, he, he pushes away the hand and just, yeah. And then Mace, you know, he's like, I've been on the set for long enough times to know when the containment module is missing. It's, yeah. And we get another epic transformation shot. And, yeah, the, you know, that's not possible. No one told the Ghost Rider that. And... Yeah, really cool when Mace and the Ghost Rider fight. You know, it's he's still not quite a match, but this is the closest we've gotten so far to an actual, yeah, someone who's strong enough to actually be a threat to the Ghost Rider. And 
and yeah, you know, the, the ultimately Gabe is able to to get through to to Robbie to to stop him, and you know, and and yeah, also the detail of you know the 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 Ghost Rider wants to get out of the containment module, and it's difficult for Robbie to to restrain him, which again is is part of the the character. And an important part, you know, that's like, you know, in in certain ways, you know, the Ghost Rider is like Batman. You know, he goes out, he gets revenge for, you know, he he wants to to punish. Yeah, you know, he he wants to stop criminals, but you know, Batman can, you know, several versions of Batman at least can contain themselves. But the Ghost Rider is very, very difficult to contain. It takes tremendous willpower. And let's see. Yeah, and they talk about Isodyne, very cool to get a reference to season two of Agent Carter. And let's see. Yeah, we get some some bit about, you know, oh, there's just too much bureaucracy. You know, what you really need in order to solve problems is a team that isn't too accountable and, and can just go and do the thing, you know. Rules just get in the way of good people doing good things, which, yeah, a lot of American conservatives love that message. Sounds a little Fox News, but okay. And... Yeah, we get another flashback, and it was Joseph who hired the gang members, and they thought it was Eli in the car. And it's one of those things, again, the moment, I hadn't thought of it, but the moment that they said it, it was like, of course, because that's his car, you know, of course they would think that Eli was in the car, because the, you know, like when Gabe showed, you know, caught, Robbie, you know, about to drive it, he was like, does he know you're using his car? You know, normally, when you see that car, Eli's behind the wheel. You know, this is not some sort of, like, timeshare car or something where, you know, ah, you know, don't, don't worry about it, go ahead and use it. No, normally, that's Eli. So, very, very clever. Because at this point, like, we, the viewer, have kind of accepted, no, 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 it's Robbie who drives that car, but that's only since Eli ended up in prison, you know, and they've, they've mentioned that before, that that car used to belong to Eli, and yeah, they talk about, you know, God didn't write that book, the devil did, and then we have the, yeah, we're, we're told, you know, the only way to stop you know, you can't hack into the thing, the only way to stop it is from inside. And, yeah, the, oh, I know you. You're Gabe, like the angel. No, I'm the other one. <laughs> because, yeah, you know, he's not an angel, he's a devil. And, yeah, and the thing, you know, you have your uncle's fire. No, mine's worse. And he burns her. And then we get, we see the, the pulse from the machine, and Eli steps out, and he's got this matter-altering power. So, yeah, very, very cool. Really looking forward to seeing the, yeah. And, uh, let's see, I have by now watched, somehow I actually managed to forget at first, but the... What's it called? The the slingshot episodes. Now I forget if this was actually before. Let's see. Yeah, I mean it says it's shortly before the start of season four, but Daisy is in it with Shield. So I mean I guess maybe they changed their minds between. But anyway, yeah, slingshot. You know it's it's here on YouTube for free. And it's it's quite good. A lot of great character moments. And I don't have a lot to say. It feels like it 
could easily have been part of an episode of the show. It, it feels completely in... what's the word? Yeah, the, the, the continuity, you know, other than Daisy being with S.H.I.E.L.D. rather than, you know, being out hunting watchdogs, you know, other than that holds up great character moments. I, I quite enjoy May saying, you know, you're a terrible spy, you're sloppy, you know, and we realize by the end of, of that bit, she's not saying, you know, you, you have to stop doing what you're doing. She's saying you're going to have to be more careful. You know, she 100% agrees with the goal. It's just that the method needs to be slightly tightened up. You gotta, you gotta be more careful, you know, very, very nicely done. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that I watched it after watching the first several episodes of this, even though I hadn't planned it on, on it going that way, because Mace is actually seen here, and he doesn't get as strong of an introduction here as he did in, I want to say it was episode two of this season. And, right, I, I quite enjoyed when, when Elena, you know, she's trying to keep the others from, from looking at the monitor, so she has to, like, knock over some stuff in the lab and then go close the cabinet by herself. And she has to get, um, get Simmons away. So, she, you know, she's like, oh, you know, I have an idea for, for the, you know, a br breakfast No, you know. And, and Fitz is like, thank you very much. Now she's going to obsess about that. You know, that was a fun little, you know. And, and, like, Elena looks, she notices, you know, Fitz is like, you know, but just, yeah, just, you know, the mission is more important than <laughs> not annoying fits. So, uh, IMDb trivia for this episode. Robbie says, the other guy in reference to his Ghost Rider persona, which is also the phrase Bruce Banner uses in reference to his Hulk persona. Let's see, and... I feel like this is meant to be a goof, but okay. Eli Morrow mentions the first law of thermodynamics, which states that energy cannot be created, nor can it be destroyed, but it can change from one form into another. Wait, is that meant to be a goof? Oh, no, wait. I, yeah, I guess the the this person is just writing out the entire thing, because I was going to say, it's not that energy changed form either in the... No, matter was straight up created because of the dark hole. Yeah, I guess they were just... They just Wanted to share that. It is IMDb trivia, after all. And, yeah, the title of the episode is a reference to the parable of the Good Samaritan. And, let's see. yes, yes, this I was thinking this as well. Judging by the motorcycle that the Good Samaritan rode when he gave Robbie Reyes his powers, it hints that he was Johnny Blaze, the first Ghost Rider, and he is now free of the deal he made with the devil for his father's life. Yes, I absolutely agreed with with that assessment and yeah uh, this reveals that the momentum energy labs group introduced in the season tied to Eli Morrow is actually successor to the Isodyne energy company from the second season of Agent Carter and let's see um yeah that is it right um the IMDb goof section for, for this episode points out that, you know, Coulson says, you know, no one's broken out yet about the containment module, but Yera broke out in the previous season's episode Paradise Lost when he took over the Zephyr for Hive. So, yeah, I guess someone ov overlooked that. Well, there's a lot of continuity in, in their defense. There's a lot of continuity to keep track of. And, yeah, a lot of great... Um, quotes for this one entered into IMDb. <laughs> Thanks. I feel so much better knowing that if I die in a fiery explosion, my eyeballs will survive. And the I I gotta say the the yeah really enjoyed. You know why why would you waste half a day flying here on a wild goose chase? Oh, it's not a wild goose chase if there are geese. Do you deny they're on board? Geese? I have zero geese. We are goose free. Very very fun. And and the yeah um, maybe she needs him to do something she can't. What? Show her face without scaring children? And 
let's see, yeah, we have the um Right, right, yeah, the <laughs> the director hasn't found you know who and you know who. I don't know what you're talking about. Right, me neither. <laughs> and <clears throat> Let's see. Then we have the. Um, when Phil tells May, you're the only one I trust about the book. Is that a, a New Hope reference? Like. The, the, you know, Leia's message to Obi-Wan Kenobi via R2-D2 or something. Because it does feel like, what are you talking? Do you not trust? Fitz and Mac are also in the building. You know, I get that he doesn't, maybe doesn't trust Reyes, Ro Robbie, to do the right thing with it. But, yeah, I think that's, yeah. And... Then we have the yeah the, the when when Daisy tells them you know she can't hack in you know Fitz says well you're out of practice too much punching not enough hacking and let's see yeah I I like you know Fitz says you know oh they were conducting experiments on something called zero matter or dark force. Who names these? Are there focus groups for evil things? 